Hey guys, it's Ben coming to you on a Sunday. I gotta stop doing that. I feel like I'm starting to mimic geeks and gamers a little too much. I gotta stop that crap. Um, how y'all doing? Uh, that was probably a dumb question to ask since you can't respond in real time, but hey. Uh, Outlaw Nights, as you know, is coming out on September 24th. It is going to be friggin' awesome. Uh, I'm really excited about telling this story. I'm really excited about getting it out there. Uh, story's been about 10 years in the making. Um, if you want to hear somebody compliment my writing, uh, uh, as much as I like to hear somebody compliment my writing, uh, go on, go ahead and check out uh, John Malin's channel uh, on Comicscape Presents. He did one uh, that was one he did with Adam Post and uh, uh, my artist, Render Contender, and um, really exciting stuff. Um, he complimented the heck out of me and uh, made me feel really. Um, really flattered um, but if you if you know anything about render contender you'll know the man uh, produces insanely good work uh, I've never seen anything like it um, you know it's funny he, he talks about how uh, I was very detailed in my script and stuff and uh, it's true I was I was worried I was getting to the point of being convoluted and like I was worried that uh, an artist might not be able to sift through all of my stuff, but uh, sure enough, first first page I ever got from him, he nailed it. He absolutely nailed it, and he hit it out the park. It was better than I was anything I was expecting. So, Render Contender is an up and coming star in my in my view. If he doesn't get more work, uh, people are stupid. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, yesterday I was I was on kind of a heavy note. I uh, got some bad news yesterday, but um, we're trying to stay positive, uh, me and my family, um, because uh, from what I understand, uh, and this will be good for anybody out there who's who's dealing with something like this. Uh, from what I understand, uh the the heartworm thing is not nearly as much of a of an issue as it was like 10 years ago um i know before i had a dog with heartworms before uh we had to give him treatment and it was essentially like the treatment for dogs uh for heartworms back then was pretty much like chemotherapy for for dogs um just you know hell hell to go through for the animal and then it's hell for everybody who you know particularly if you're if you have codependent empathy like myself um but uh but you know the the dog uh karina is being started on just a, a treatment of antibiotics um and it's the old just uh, give her give her the pills twice a day till the bottle runs out. Um, I think that I mean at least thank God she doesn't have to go through all that extra crap. You know, uh, it's better to just take a pill and feel a little bit crummy for a few hours. But anyway, uh, so pause. You know. I, uh, I'm, I'm keeping the hope that, uh, she's gonna get through this and she's gonna be fine. Um, anyway. Um, in terms of pop culture, I have been at kind of a loss in terms of, uh, I, uh, growing up, you know, one of my big, uh, go-to addictions has always been media, uh, entertainment, TV, movies, video games. Um, ultimate escapism. Uh, you know, things that really sparked my imagination. Um, I don't think it's just 
because of my age. I think it's because of uh, the ultimate decrease in quality. It's it's visually apparent to anybody who used to watch media, you know, has seen this transition happening. Because if you pay attention, you can watch it happening in in progression. Studios think they're really clever in in introducing little themes that they consider controversial and they kind of slip it in there and you know it always starts off as very minuscule and it slowly builds it slowly grows um and it's like you know it's one of those things where a lot of the changes they do are good but i mean they're good in terms of theory like I like the idea of, of you know, not doing shows that make fun of gay people, that make fun of people um, who don't conform to what is traditionally considered normal amongst Americans. I, you know, I have absolutely no qualms with that whatsoever. Um, as much as uh, Comics Gate's opponents would love to tell you the uh, opposite. Um, that's not that was never the issue for me um the issue for me was always this the way these characters were framed you know they it feels like they're treated like it's like they're an animal on display at the zoo it's like you know you you, you get a bunch of people together and you oh my god look it's a gay person look a gay person is over there like everybody watch look at what it does you know it's like you know you're you're dehumanizing people when you do that um i get the i get the intent is not to dehumanize them but the ultimate execution and end result is dehumanizing um kind of you know i know i'm getting kind of abstract um but it all it all ties into a lot of what I've been talking about, because um, I find that especially the CW was really big on doing this uh, with the Arrowverse. It's that everybody every every edition becomes kind of a an intersectional uh, display case, um, and also just the fact that uh, so many of the characters. Uh, they're either written to be kind of derivative of each other or they're written to be um, just kind of uh, I'm, I'm mainly right now I'm thinking of the example of um, Curtis who joined the Arrowverse uh, somewhere around season five six something like that um, I might be wrong, but I was thinking of him because really they just made him a male Felicity. Um, he just kind of did all the same things Felicity did, but he had kind of a different, you know, uh, he had kind of a, a slightly different spin on it that I found a little bit too uh, obnoxious, I guess. I don't know. I just wasn't fond of the character. I just found it was very, you know, I, I feel like I've seen this character a thousand times. I don't like those kind of characters where it's like it feels like it's just okay this is a character type you know um but yeah Arrowverse uh real, started off really great and strong became a giant PSA for uh intersectional politics thus uh taking taking away the original themes and downplaying all the original themes to create a new theme that really has nothing to do with the actual plot. It just has to do with who's in the plot. I don't understand how woke people, like, function. I don't get it. Um, I mean, when you, when you have this worldview where you literally consider every single thing about the modern world to be a mistake, uh, and that everything has to be uh changed from the ground up like how do you how do you find any 
form of peace or happiness on this earth. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's going to do it for today, uh, today's video. If anybody has any, any suggestions of uh, some type of media you'd like me to talk about, um, feel free to let me know. Um, just not a lot I'm looking forward to right now. Just not a lot. Um, all the stuff that looks really interesting to me is stuff that's like a year away from coming out. Um, but however, I can tell you that uh, there's a really badass comic book on the horizon. Uh, just remember, Outlaw Nights comes out September 24th to Indiegogo. Be sure to show your support. Be sure to share it with your friends. Be sure to share it with your family. As long as there are no small children, because this book is not for small children. Uh, there's a lot of cursing, a lot of violence. Uh, sexually suggestive themes at, uh, later on. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for small children. Or just children in general. Just, you know, make sure they're 17 or up when they read this and they're, you know, they, they're able to recognize that a story is, is fictional. Um, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I will talk to you tomorrow.